Today I'm brewing a simple, clean and hopefully delicious German Pils and I'm doing it with a brand new piece of brewing equipment. I'm Martin Keane and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 different styles of beer. And for today's style German pills, I am going to be trying out a hop filter. This is called a hop block and it's from Brow Supply. And what this does is it's installed inside my Unibrow kettle where it will prevent any hops from getting out of the kettle into my pump or into my fermenter. The hop block consists of three parts. There's a 10 inch filter disc and then there's a continuous silicon seal which goes at the bottom of that disc. And then there's a hole where you insert a dip tube which goes into the tri-clamp port in the bottle of the kettle. Now up until now I've been using a little hop basket in my boil kettle for hops. So I simply insert this where it hangs onto the side of the boil kettle and I put my hops in there. Now by switching to this filter instead of using this basket I'm hoping to see a couple of improvements. First of all, it seems pretty proven at this point that using a basket like this does lead to a reduction in hop utilization. The hops are going to get more infused into the boiling beer if they're just in there roaming free than constrained in one of these. The second problem with this is it just kind of gets in the way, especially when I'm going to insert my immersion chiller into the boiled kettle to cool stuff down. But I do have some reservations. I've used filtering solutions in the kettle before and honestly, they haven't gone that well. They just got completely gunked up. And then when I was trying to run my pump, I would end up just sort of getting stuck. I'd have to keep scraping off the, the filter to try to get any sort of flow going. So we'll see how this does. Brow Supply say that that's not been an issue with this hop block that this will actually keep things flowing very well. So let's put it to the test. Ingredients for this one. If you want to get cute, you could add some sort of biscuity malt in if you like, but I'm playing this one strictly by the style guidelines and brewing purely with German Pilsner malt nine pounds of that and that's going to give me a gravity of about 10.44 for a beer that will be 4.6 percent should be easy I'm mashing in here at 152 Fahrenheit. I'm going to keep doing that until I get to my pre-boil gravity, which is 1038. This though is, uh, this is thirsty work. I came from the mud, desert on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Just a word or two about this beer, the Heller's Bock or Maybock or as I've since learned in Germany, I think it's called Heller Bocker. When Brian and I tried this a month or so ago, we weren't completely blown away by it. But since then, since giving it a bit more time to condition, man, this is now one of my favorites. Just needed a bit more time. So theme of the day is hops. Uh, let's talk about what hops are going in this one to test out this hop filter. Well, I'm going for an IBU of about 36 here. I'm going to get there by first of all using as my bittering hop, Perle hops. I have 1.25 ounces of those, which will go in at 60 minutes. Then at 10 minutes and at flame out, that's when I'm going to add 
half an ounce each of Hallenthal Mittelfrut. So overall, not putting a huge amount of hops in, little, little over two ounces of hops. We'll see how this hop filter handles it. All right, here we go. This guy in to sanitize is going to be a bit easier now. Okay, so the last of the Halle Tower is going in. Now we're going to turn off the heat and we're going to see if I can get the pump running here to recirculate to help with the chilling. So let's turn the pump on and see what happens. Well, so far so good. We got the, uh, the pump just recirculating here and then the immersion chiller has water running into it from outside and then exiting out here in the sink and we can see that the temperature is steadily dropping. All right, well that seemed to work perfectly. No scraping at all required there. Yeast for this one. I have got a starter here of WLP 830 German Lager. You might have noticed from previous brews I have quite a lot of this on hand. But yeah, this is what I'm using for this one. I'm gonna add this once the wort is down to 50 Fahrenheit and then let it ferment out from there. Now, while it's hard to figure out how much hop particulate made it into the fermenter just by looking at it, we can get a pretty good idea by looking in the bottom of the boil kettle. Let's, uh, let's take a look. And take a look at this. So this filter is absolutely caked in uh, hop stuff. You can see the, the depth of it here where the immersion chiller was. So it's done a very nice job of keeping those hops out, but at the same time, it's really drained the rest of the kettle. There is a very little liquid left in here. Of course, the other thing is the hop utilization. We won't know about that, and I guess, until we taste it, but it was certainly more convenient not to have that hop basket in the way uh, especially when I was trying to chill the wort. So, so far, pretty impressed. All right, it's beer tasting time. We've got Evan. Hi, Evan. Hello. So a couple of fermentation notes. This beer was fermented at 50 Fahrenheit, raised to 55. The beer ended up coming in at 10.08, it's a 5% beer. Okay, so what do you think first of all about the appearance of this German Pils? This is a very light colored beer. I wouldn't think of anything lighter than this, like a straw color. So this is one of the lightest ones I think I've done. I don't think you're gonna get lighter than this. Like yeah. this, this almost has like a weird kind of like, yeah, I don't even know. It, I wouldn't. It looks like a shandy. That's what I was gonna say. It looks like almost like a shandy. Shand, yeah, like yeah. It has, it's had something added to it that's not beer. This being the first beer that I um, brew with my new hop filter, I wanted to see if you got any sort of hop aromas mm. off of this beer. Um, the star guidelines say that you might get some sort of light honey from this sort of beer. Um, definitely getting some sort of sweetness in the smell. Let's let's go for the uh, for the flavor. Second taste doing my research beforehand with this, I was trying to find different types of German Pilsners and the Bex was the one that came up as like the most mm. popular. And it's, it's definitely different to an American Pilsner. Like what would we say is an American Pilsner? Bud or Coors or something like that. Yeah, this American. definitely has a, this is much more flavorful than that. I think there's much more to it. I think there's a little bit of hoppiness, less malty than an American beer as well. And just kind of clean. German beers are all clean, clean finish. This yep. is what I definitely say about this. You and the, the, the six weeks lagering, that's made all the difference as well. Yeah. I didn't lager it for six weeks. Ran out of time. 
as he well knows. Yeah, this was this is actually uh, four weeks old, but you know, given the the fact that it is quite young, it's actually fallen clear already, and it doesn't really have any. Of no, there's young there's, there's to no it. there's no sight. If I drank this, I wouldn't think, oh wow, it needs more time. Yeah. I don't think there's there's any sense of that. So. But <laughs> <laughs> this guy off camera trying to put it off the entire time. Yes. Drink I love this. It. <laughs> Would you like one for the bloopers? Apparently this is and a thing now. Hey, 